My name is Lara Kudaisi. I help people heal from emotional pain, trauma, childhood dysfunctions for a happily ever after. My story in a nutshell is that I healed from having a child at 19, 14 heartbreaks, 15 abortions, and a divorce. I have created a program titled How They Heal. And in that very year where I had made that decision within my spirit, the most handsome man, mm. the most deliciously generous, kind-hearted man just appeared in my life. Mm. Very unexpected. In fact, I was in Dubai at the time and a mutual friend had called up me to say, oh, there's some guy that's interested in you. I was like, I beg, I don't want no guy to come and scatter what I have finally found as my inner peace. And so that's how the love story really began. We met up, we realized we actually knew quite a lot of our mutual friends and it was very easy. It was mm -hmm. an easy, that was where you go to church and you say, God has done it for me yeah. type of testimony, yes. right? Yes. And as a matter of fact, I gave my testimony in church. Um, I gave my testimony to my followers. I said, if God can do this, if God can bring me out of years and years of singleness, even with two children on top, and he's able to take care of my fees, my children's school fees, my house, he just took care of me. Then we serve a good God. Mm. And so we had our wedding day, which was everything I had ever dreamed. It was perfect. It was everything that I had imagined down to my ring, my dress, my shoes, my hairstyle, my flowers, even the salad that we were going to wow. eat. I had dreamt it all in my mind and it became my reality. And at the time when I did get married, I got married on my father's birthday, which was an extra special day because my dad was 85 and... I was the only person left in my family that Not good was thing. to get married. So it was a big deal. This was like, thank God, oh, Finally. God has really straightened Finally. this girl's path. And so it was a marvelous day. It wasn't an overlandish day. It wasn't an over-the-top day. But it was classy. It was perfect. It was beautiful. And so at this time, you're thinking, ah, why are you here? What, what was your story? Yeah. Right? And so we enjoy a relationship a marriage builds we had issues and this is where i would say and inter interject that marriage is more than the hair the yeah. wedding dress the ring that oh my god he proposed to me when you get married it's a different ball game when you get married it's a clash of personalities backgrounds experiences trauma as Lara has said, yeah. half of us are living traumatically. Yeah. Half of us are dealing with unhealed issues and it spills on into our relationships. So anyway, a few weeks down the line, I, I realized that, okay, we have some serious complications here. Life is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And we have many struggles, many issues, many, many issues. The kind where I thought, God, how, how did I get myself here? How, how did this happen? And so eight months down the line, I'm on a bus on my way back to Lagos. I flew out for a week to go to London to sort out some things. And I will never forget that particular trip. I tra travel a lot to London because I have my family and my house and everything is based there. But on this particular trip, I did not want to go. I didn't want to go. I really, really didn't want to go. I had to sort something out very, very urgently with my housing situation in, in the UK. So I had no choice. And so I'm sitting on the bus, finally going home, getting ready to get my suitcase and on my way to the airport. And I get a phone call from Biggie. Now, it's very unusual for me to get a phone call from Biggie. Biggie is not my staff. He's not part of my entourage. So I never really have interactions with him. 
And so a FaceTime, a video call comes through, but unfortunately the static, the network, everything is, so his messaging is broken up. And he does this three times. And in my mind, I'm like, why is Biggie calling me so frequently? Like, what's, what's, what do me and him have? Who is Biggie? If ah. I want to interject. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> and so eventually I managed to get through to Biggie. And Biggie says to me, oh, Big, um, Ma, we just want you to know that um, something has happened to Oga. He's in the hospital. But everything is okay. We just want to let you know in case you're trying to call him. And I said, okay, no problem. Where is he in the hospital? Give me the phone. Give the phone to him. Let me speak to him. Okay, ma, no problem. I'm, I'm coming, ma. He drops the phone, calls back again. So by now you figured out that Biggie is my husband's PA. Yes. So no more phone calls. I call back and there's this hesitancy everyone is kind of confused everyone is like mm, mm, mm. and so this time I call Mr. Akin Mr. Akin is the driver and I say Mr. Akin what's going on let me speak to Oga where's captain and so they say okay ma we're coming we're coming ma we're coming again we're coming ma we're coming ma we're coming oh yeah come now let's let me speak to captain and so it was on my final call to Mr. Akin that I on the phone with him and unfortunately, for the whole situation, as he's on his way to give me the phone, give the phone to the doctor, I hear in the background, what do you want us to tell her? He has gone, he has gone. What do you want us to say? That was how you I heard. got to find out that my husband had passed away. On my way going to London, um, on my way going to back home to Lagos, I heard in the background, wow. a very irritated, frustrated, probably underpaid, exhausted doctor mm. saying mm. that there's nothing that they can say to me because my husband had passed away. But even at this point in time, I was still like, what do they know, Joe? Let me call my mom. My mom is like a superhero to me. I don't know mm. if we have moms, moms like, like this. But my mom can make any situation, any, think of it, any situation, she can turn it around. And so I give my mom a call that, mom, I don't understand what's going on. They said captain's in the hospital. Can you just go and check and make sure everything's okay? And at this point, I kid you not, I am 100% convinced that my mom is going to call me back and say, don't See? mind them. I want idiots. They don't know what they're saying. Everyone is fine. He's just not feeling well. And so I wait for the call. I wait and I wait and I wait. And by this time, I'm about four stops away to, to my house. And finally, the phone call comes. And my mom is like, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Banke, he's gone. He's gone. And it's only at that point, because my superhero couldn't rescue me from what I was afraid to really embrace. It was only at that point that the reality sunk in that actually I had lost my husband. My husband had passed away. And so between what happens when I'm on the bus to how I get myself to Lagos, I really couldn't tell you because I, I think I was in a space where I could not really process everything. But the one thing that I remember thinking to myself is, God, how could you do this? How could you set me up only for me to fall? And my journey towards healing, overcoming grief is a long journey. It's a process. But in the one thing that I um, made a decision when I said, okay, this is what my life has become is, I'm either going to stay really pissed off mm. with God or I'm going to recognize that I cannot get through this without God. And so I had to make a choice. I had to forgive God. Mm. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Right? Yeah. The God that forgives us. We are now doing shakara. Okay, I yeah. forgive you. Yeah. But I had to forgive God. I felt I had to say, you know what, God? <laughs> I let you go. <laughs> it's like... I know that all things are working together for my good. I know that 
your ways are not my ways. And so even though I cannot understand why you would do such a thing or why such a thing will happen, I'm going to trust that there is a purpose behind this pain that you have inflicted. Mm. And it was an infliction of pain. It was something that I didn't expect. It's almost as if you're walking and someone just drags the carpet off oh. under your feet and you fall. And so that's really my journey. Mm. Um, my journey to healing is one of accepting that this is what has happened. Yeah. The biggest source of misery in our human existence is our refusal to accept what is. When we continue to hold on to things and life is pulling us in the direction that we may be scared to go into. Like Lara said, it's just one week of her hell that she had to go through. But when she went through that hell of one week with her backlash and all of that, life continued, life moved on. And so for me, my journey, my story is, it really doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in. It really doesn't matter what level of pain you encounter you have a choice to overcome. You have a choice to heal. And that choice really begins when you decide to let it go. It's in the process of letting go that you receive the grace that you need to move forward and to overcome. So that's really wow. my, my, wow. my story. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <sighs> Banke, thank you. Thank you, because... All of this, you know, that's a submission. You don't want to know the processes. You don't want to know how many days. You don't want to know how many years. You don't want to know. But I have one zillion questions for you. Go ahead. You understand? I'm super humbled and honored to be here. It's beautiful, right? Yes. But it's, it's crazy. <laughs> What's, what's more beautiful is that you're here, you survived, and you're sharing, you're healing, and it's, it's amazing. So where do I begin? My name is Chinon Sarabai. Mm -hmm. um, where do I start? Yes, the journey, where you started from, <sighs> how you met, you know, did, how did you guys meet? Okay, so, yeah, the journey. Yes. <laughs> it's so hard for me to be here. Yes. I run away from this. So, just manage. <laughs> yes. Mm. So, we met six years ago, right? And it was in February, the month of February. I had just finished doing a friend's photo shoot, and, you know, I was assisting her because I'm into the whole media creative industry. So we had finished a photo shoot and she had, um, she had a mutual friend who was trying to date her at the time. But she's like, oh, he's short, I'm short. What will happen to our children? So, you know, they were just friends. And this was the first time he was meeting me. So on our way home, he said he wanted to pick up something from my husband's house. I still call him my husband. Yeah. So no offense. Um, and we went to the house in the living room. So I met him in his house. So when I tell people this story, they're like, ah, you went to his house. Like you just packaged yourself. I just entered the house like one time. But it was, it was God. God made our paths cross that day. And um, it was a beautiful meeting because I feel like I know four months before then, I, I was just dealing with a heartbreak, and so I was out of it. But my friend knew about that experience, so she didn't really want me to go into any of all that craziness. And she just felt, ah, fine boy, someone from the entertainment industry, because he used to be on West African Idols. I'm not really understanding what is going on here. <laughs> so um, we went out for barbecue. He... We had like three cars, and he's he's like, oh, let me let me let me let me go in your car. And I'm like, okay, no problem. I was still a learner. I still had my L on my on my small Jalopy car. And then when he goes in and he sees the L, he's like, please, can I drive? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, sure. I really don't even like driving. So that's how he drove and went to the party. 
and he started telling my friend that I really like your friend. And she now puts him on the bench, asks him all the questions, and he's like, you know, I'm a worried guy. We fight for free. <laughs> and, you know, I just laughed. And I don't know, there was something. Yeah. Where do I begin? Let me just take you back a bit. I'm, I'm this child who didn't grow up with her mom and her, and her dad, so to speak. Okay. I grew up with my auntie who I grew up calling my mom. And, you know, for me, it was very important that I did marriage right. So it was almost like, this is the one thing that I want to get right. This is the one thing that I want to have, like my own family, not having my children deal with a broken home or okay. living a single mom or any of that. Mm. So I was, you know, that child that, even though I was very chilled and cool and vibey, I loved God and I held on to him tight because I'm like, God, oh, you have to bless me with my own home. I remember then in, in the university, I would I joined the sanctuary keeper. So I am like, fine girl, why are you sweeping church? I'm like, just wait too. And I'm sweeping this house. God is taking care of my house. I'm sweeping my future house with all this um, type of thing. So yes, I was coming from a very faith-based background, trusting and believing God for my bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and oh. all of that. And so it just felt right because this was someone who not only looked amazing, but was beautiful in his heart. Like, have you seen my husband? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a catch and then he loved God and we understood ourselves, like our faith. We understood, like there was just that peace. And so we dated for six months, five months. So we met in February, got engaged July on his birthday. And by November, we had our traditional wedding. And December 28th, we were married. So in, if you do the maths in like 11 months, that's the kind wow. of prayer we pray for. Pray, yes, I yes, this that year, that this is my don't year. Don't waste your time. Yeah. You know, when you enter January, you're like, God, this is the year. And now me, <laughs> and get married, so have a baby happened. going, if possible. My goodness, wow! And it was beautiful. It was, it was like a dream because we we wanted to do it right, and so like we didn't want to start playing around and mm. hanky panky. You know what I mean? So it was a pure relationship, and it was a relationship built and founded on God. In fact, even our the wedding party. The bridal shower and all those things. We had a worship night before the wedding. Wow. You know, so before barbecue and having bachelor's eve and all the crazy things that, you know, we like to do mm -hmm. before our wedding. Bible says, seek you first the kingdom, kingdom of God of and God. his righteousness and every other thing. So it was like, oh, finally, <laughs> every other thing. Thank you, Jesus. I have it all. <laughs> so it was a testimony. It was beautiful. It was awesome. He's a gospel minister. He sings in church, loves the Lord. What else? Mm. What else can you go ask for? Ask for, really. So I was happy. And um, I had... Son, give birth to Jaden. It's great. Marriage is not perfect. Yeah. We had our ups and downs, but, you know, and that's why it hurt me because it was almost like, you know, the beginning time where you have some rough patch, patch. here and there. Oh. And then we had, in the third year, we had come to a place where we were good. Like, there was, okay. you know, synergy. Like, he understood me and understood yeah. me. I could look at him and he would get me and he would look at me and I'll get, okay. you know. So we had gone through a lot at the time. And it was almost like, finally, things were looking up, even in his career, my career. Mm. And everything was beginning to make sense. And, hmm. The hardest part. Yeah. I really don't know how to talk about this, Just but I would take try your time and my best. Use the words that come to you. So yeah. Okay, so in December, sometime in December. Okay. He, okay, so sometime in December he was so he would feel sometimes in December. Ah, oh God, I don't even know how to put it. That's okay. I don't know how to talk about this. Pick he was ill. Time. Yeah. 
but it wasn't like it was just one of those things we thought we would get through it wasn't serious it wasn't life-threatening it didn't seem life-threatening i mean we've had we've gone through a lot he's had to go to the hospital at different points in time you know it wouldn't be the first time you say oh i'm having a headache and popping some drugs or aspirin or what, what have you so but this time it was different because it was expired drugs and it affected his liver. And at the time I was away in December, I had traveled and on my son's birthday, he came, he came in, I wanted to surprise us. So he had shades on, he had glasses on and it seemed like he was trying to hide it. But when I went to offer him something to eat and I'm like what's going on and I saw the color of his eyes was yellow I'm like what's going on I was like oh you know so you caught me now what are you feeling like you know just laughing because he didn't want me to panic that he, he used to say he used to say I'm um, an alarmist he used to say I'm okay. alarmist yeah it was like a joke, <laughs> it was like a joke but he will be like eh, I don't want her to panic every time she'll just panic yeah. what's going on <laughs> So I was like, but well, this is not fair. You should have, you know, told me and everything. I was like, oh, he's fine. He's good. He's already taking treatments because he was away in Delta State. So he was already taking treatments. He was doing some work there. So he literally just came in for Jaden's birthday and okay. he's going, he was going to go back and continue his medication because he was already taking treatments. And next thing I know, he goes back to Delta and... A lot happened in between, but let me just say, he didn't come back. It, at some point, he said he had to turn off his phone, so he'll be out of reach. I would try to call. It was just a lot of drama, a lot of craziness, all kinds of things that I can't even share. Yeah. But eventually, I went to the hospital, and that was a, a Friday. I went to the hospital on Friday. And on Saturday, on Saturday, you know, he was, on Saturday, he was, I don't know what happened. I, I just know that I was asked to, you know, go home to the hospital because I wasn't really getting what was going on everywhere. Everybody just, I don't know, everybody, every, it was crazy. So I decided to go home and my mom was in Delta State, just go home and speak to her. And, you know, maybe she could help me understand or make sense of what was going on. So on my way to meet, my, meet with my mom, my phone died. And when I got to her place, you know, she received a call, but she just acted normal. So I was just, you know, still like, oh, God has to heal my husband, you know, God has to heal my husband. I'm still praying. I'm still, okay, hold my hand, mommy, hold my hand, let's pray. I don't feel fine, but hold my hand, let's pray. I'll just keep, you know, pacing and I couldn't really understand what was going on. And she's like, ah, oh, it's fine. Okay, let me put water for you to buy. I'm like, mommy, I didn't come for a holiday. Like, let's do something. Like, she's like, have you eaten? I was, don't. So in church, we fast from, we have the women's to women's fast in January. So I was already fasting from January. Then Anna entered, my husband is not feeling well. I need to fast for him to get out of the hospital. So I've, I've been fasting since January to February. And she was telling me about food. I'm like, that is not what we're here for. Yeah. We're here to pray. And she was just like, you know, calm down, petting me. My phone was charging. I said, let me go and get my phone and, you know, see if I can call. She said, leave your phone, just rest. 11 p.m. It's like, I need to get my phone. So I turned on my phone, and as soon as I turned it on, oh, where are you? You and Jaden can come and stay in our house. Oh, that was a friend. And I was like, why oh. is someone inviting me to stay in a house with my son? And then I saw crying smileys who just come to my phone, and then I'm like, what's going on? And then there was a prayer group chat that we had opened, and some people just left the group. Some people just said, Eric, no, why? I was like, what does this mean? And I, I call, I called a few people. I'm like, what's going on? And nobody still wanted to tell me anything. And then I went on Instagram and I just... Did you like a petition? Saw it. Thank you. Yeah. And 
It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Remember I said it earlier today before they all came that crying is a natural, is a, is a reaction to an unpleasant event. Do you understand? So it's okay. We see, we are. It's okay. It's okay. I'm here to share my story and to inspire someone else because I believe that sometimes we don't go through these things for ourselves. We actually do it for other people. So that's why I'm here. And I'm reminding myself this because one of the things that have helped me is purpose. Mm. Mm. And that's the one thing that I'm going to say because Purpose is very important. That's why I'm here. So I'm just going to try Stop. to do what I can Came do. Here, yeah. When I lost my husband, I felt heartbroken. I was angry with everybody. I was in denial at first. I was like, no, God is going to bring my husband back. The kind of faith that I have, you know. He Maybe he wants to show the world something. He wants the world to pay attention. So... You know, I was in denial. I was praying for him to come back and everything. But at some point, I had to just accept the situation or the reality of things. And I wanted to leave. I knew I wanted to leave because as much as at some point I was dealing with depression and mm. all kinds of craziness, the expectations people have of you while you're mourning and your internal struggle because you're here. And at mm. that point, it's not like I really want to be here, here. If you ask me, like, I'm not enjoying this feeling. So mm. you can't tell me how to live while I don't even want to live. Mm. Do you get what I mean? So whatever you see, just take. I had come to a point where I had to accept myself, accept where I was emotionally, physically, and the reality that I was alive. Mm. And God had a purpose for me. As much as I was, at some point, I was really like, God, why would you let this happen to me? Like, why? Like, really? I could quote so many scriptures. In fact, I didn't want to open the Bible because I was quoting scriptures when my husband was in the hospital. And mm. I trust, like, I didn't doubt that God wouldn't come through. Like, I had no doubt. doubt. So it was almost like, I didn't want to hear any Christian song. I mm. didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to hear, like, so at some point, I had to start staying in a nursing mother's class in church. I'm like, why are you not sitting in church? I'm like, I'm not seeing my vision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are you not seeing mother's class? Because it's almost like I'm watching it on TV and mm. then I can hear the word, hear the praise without being there. I don't know if it makes sense, but, you know, we used to go to church a lot. So it was just a lot to process and a lot to come back to go. But this year, I'm like, you know, I'm going hard. I'm going to pray in church. I'm going inside church. I don't really care what is going on. So what am I trying to say? In the midst of it all, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of everything that you're going through, find your purpose. Find your reason to live. Find your voice. Don't let your circumstances speak stronger than you. Mm. I'd always say talk back. Like, whenever you hear mm. what your situation is saying, what people have to say, always make sure you have the last word and make sure that word is built on God, mm. is built on faith and not fear. Don't make a decision out of fear because mm. at, at that point, I actually felt like a failure. I actually felt like I couldn't pray. People tell me, <laughs> you weren't praying enough. You were I'm like, really? Mm. Like, you didn't pray enough. You were not spiritual enough. I'm like, wow. And then how do you say, but I was praying. praying. You know, and it's like, God, why would you allow people to ask, where is my God? Mm. And so I was doubting, like, okay, is God really going to be enough for me? I had 
that moment of doubt where it's almost like, how am I going to take care of myself? How am I going to take care of my son? son? If I couldn't be, I felt like a failure. If I couldn't be a good wife, how would I be a good mother? Mm. How am I going to do this? I had all kinds of doubts, but like she said, you have to choose <laughs> if you're going to stay angry with God or accept or. that you need God. So I got to a point where it was like, I had heard all that they would say, God is the husband to the widow and father to the fatherless. And I just thought, mm, consolation I prize, I'll make, I'll make, I'll make story. And then I got to that point where it was like, I really can't do this without you. Mm. And I really, I remember crying that night and telling God, like, God, they said you are husband to the widow and father to the fatherless. And if a husband knows how to take care of a wife, and I knew my husband did a fantastic job, mm. I know that you can do even more because you own the universe. Like, you have all the resources at your disposal. So if my husband, who had his limitations as a human being, as a man, could take care of me and I still want that, then I accept you to be my husband and take care of me. And as soon as I said that prayer, I would see God just show up and show out. Like, mm. And it's almost like, I had someone tell me, I don't even want to say there are certain things you cannot share because Shit, yeah. the world mind cannot process. Yeah. But everybody that knew me or didn't know me thought that oh, well, this is the end. But that was when God started another level with me. And it comes with trusting God, it comes with believing, regardless. And it's, I have so much to say, God. <laughs> <laughs> believing in spite of what you've been through, through. in spite of what you're going through. Just trusting in God and knowing that he has a purpose for you. Prior to this time, I've always, my favorite scripture has always been, you know, in Romans, where he says that God causes all things to work, work together. together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. purpose. So you know this, and we know a God that can actually cause the good, the bad, and the ugly to work out for your good. So I had to ask myself, what is going to be my attitude while I'm trying to make sense of this um, madness. Yes. What is going to be my attitude? Am I going to just sit down and sulk and keep crying and keep wailing and keep complaining and throw pity parties? Hmm. What is going to be my attitude while I wait for God to make beauty out of this ashes that has been served me? Hmm. And I would always hear, just praise him in the storm. Just hmm. praise him in the storm. Hmm. Just praise him in the storm. Hmm. So whenever you see me... Wow. Lost it. I'm happy. I'm like, wow. this one is happy. You. It's happy that my husband died. And it's so wow. sad that people actually tell you that, that you actually hear people say that. You're like, wow. I'm only just trying to live. Wow. So live regardless of what people will say. Because that's what God wants for you. Yeah. He said, He came mm. that you have life and have it more abundant. Mm -hmm. So we, so, and sometimes it's so sad that it might actually come from ourselves. Oh, yes. amongst it's us. From the the love it's like, you know, how can the Bible say, Live, I came to give you life more abundantly, and you're like, Oh, don't live too much. Mm. So, live a little. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would say, you know, I would always match up whatever I was hearing or whatever was being said about me to what God was saying about me. If God says I'm beautiful, then I don't need to keep wearing that. Um, sad and depressed look. If he's going to give me beautiful ashes, then you're going to have to see me look beautiful mm. because that's what he has said. Mm. So you don't know, like, you don't now want to choose, mm. it's like selective belief or selective yes. trust or yes. selective remembrance of mm. intention. So you remember what the word of God says when it's convenient, convenient and, for you. And, you know, so as much as possible, I, I just had to choose to have a positive attitude and praise God. And I'm still praising God because I'm still healing, as you can see. Yeah. People think that Ash is good. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so are uh, all of us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. To know. So thank you. I know how difficult that that is. I know. It's not easy. And then to come and do it in front of people. You know, you're my hero. Banke, I don't know how you do it. You guys are my hero. You're from the East, you know. But in Yoruba, they'll say the morning time for a woman is one year. But for a man is maybe one month or three weeks. 
you get they will say ah no you have to understand with him or oh, he needs to have sex so he can marry quickly do you understand so but i have met men who have even remarried but they are still hurting from the death because they didn't heal do you understand so i wanted to bring a man to let's hear from the perspective of a man how is he feeling and i'm so excited that teddy esosa don momo agreed to be here so please Join me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Teddy, <laughs> welcome. Yes, I want to, you know, they shared their journey, how they met their spouses, where it started from, and then where it ended physically. Okay. You know, so I, I wanted to start from there. Thank you so much. Um, this is actually the very first time I'll wow. be doing this. I'm telling you. Wow. I told her. Wow. Um, yeah. He yeah never um, I'm a public person, but there's certain things I just um, I don't like. Uh, my personal life is not public, but I'm a public person. Yeah. This is the very yes. first Hi. after uh, 2014, this 2020 now, so after six years, that I'm actually talking. This is the first time I'm actually talking. So. And I said, I'm, I'm going to do everything. So whatever you do, ask, go ahead, ask. <laughs> I yeah. think I'm, I'm I now. Ready okay. now. I'm okay, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay, how do, how do we start now? How did you guys meet? Okay, how we you met. Know, okay, um, an on-air personality. So yeah. I work on radio, I was on television. So uh, yeah, she came all the way from Delta. And there's a guy called Mac Shallon. He owned uh, a record label at that time. Still on the record label now, but he's doing some other things now. Okay. So he brought her to the studio and for an interview. And first of all, he's like, Hey, I want you to listen to the song, listen to the song. Because somehow, somehow, I, I, I mean, I've been doing this radio thing since 1993. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I might look young, but I'm not young. Yes, seriously, when I see my mates, you know, I'm talking to my mates, and like my mates are like grandfathers, you know. Mm. We're sitting down and they're like, that's a young boy there. I don't want to tell you my age, but they will come, I'll <laughs> tell you. I'm not in my 40s even, so you should know that. Yeah. <laughs> so when um, Marshallon brought her, they brought, they brought two songs. So they were not like, they didn't know which one they were going to like, okay, which one do you think we should play? And that's what, what most artists would come and say. So um, I listened to both of the songs and how I listen to songs, the first of all, I want to listen to first as a promoter and then I want to listen to as somebody who, is, who likes to enjoy music. So I listened to the, both songs, but I know there's a particular song they wanted to promote. But when I now listen to it, and there's a particular song she also loved, you know, so, so when I listened to both songs, I was like, no, 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 no. Because I saw how they were like, Teddy, this one got, this one got. I was like, mm, 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 mm. I think this one is okay. I think this one is okay. Let's do a video on this one. Let's do this one. But you know, somehow when you have a record label and you have the artists, like mm. the record label always want to supersede. So they first, like, Let's do this one first because it's like they, they already prepared a video. They, they've already shot a video for that very for song. That. So it's not be nice to not be promoting a song that doesn't have a video. So I said, okay, no problem. So that was how we met first. So now after three months, the song just was there. So they now decided, like, okay, let's even play the other one. Just two days after the song was played, people were calling her. And she was like, do you remember taste sex like that? You know? So the next single that they wanted to drop, she made it possible. Like she didn't want to listen to the guy again. Like, like you don't get better here. So she called me personally and you know said, "Please, I have the song. I want you to actually listen to it." And then I listened to it. I said, mm -hmm. "Why not do this? Why not do this?" Somehow, somehow, I didn't even know. You, just, there's this talent you have. You don't even know you have talent. Yeah. So I have the talent of music. I'm telling you. Yeah. But I just believe that radio thing now, television thing is okay. My so so I. But when I listen to the song, I actually hear, if I'll just hear words. I'm like, why not add this word? So I will not put the word. And you know, she not added the word. And the word just became something that became her, her brand. And she was like, you know, you actually said it. So that was just on the side. So that, that's how we actually started. 
this was way back in the 2000, I think early 2001, 2002, 2003. So the radio stopped me, I'm busy, she's busy. And then just, just like that, whenever she wants to release songs, she always come, send it over. And then I just also, my, me was just, it was just basically an AOP, uh, OAP, OAP. OAP, and an artist Artists. relationship. That was just basically its own. So I, I, I mean, I, I'm not always keeping tabs with artists, like we want to, what is artist married or something like that. So uh, I didn't even know she was married, seriously, I didn't even know. So after years, people, me, I would just be doing my own thing too. <laughs> you know, so I, I heard she was married. I didn't know, seriously, I didn't even know. But later, I think I, I got to know that she was married because there was a particular lady uh, who did a song. So she did a particular song and I'm a, I'm a friend to every artist. So I don't have this person like, oh, no, no, you're, you're special, you're special. I'm a friend to everybody. Um, so even the managers, I'm friends to their managers and the record label. So uh, there's a particular lady who did a song and she came to meet me that, Titi, somebody, please come and help me out. So uh, she came and her name is Aisha, maybe on the record. So uh, uh, her name is Aisha. So she did this particular song. The song is titled Food is Ready. And uh, Kefi also did a song called Food is Ready. But Kefi, you know, Kefi's a star now. So yeah. she did a song and the song was like oh, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then this other lady was like, that's my song, that was my song. So Teddy, please help me out. And the most OAPs won't collect money. Like, all right. So like, go and bring this amount. So she just felt like, okay, that's one person that can actually help me out. So she came to me and I, I listened to the song. I'm like, this song, it's sounding familiar. How come? So. <laughs> I is this the same song? I'm telling you. <laughs> and and, and go, this is my friend. This is my, my friend. friend. So I'm like, you guys want to box me up right here. So and I told um I, I, the thing is that and I said, come, you know what? It's like it's like a match. You have your voice. She has a voice. Which whichever uh we blow, we blow. So don't say that uh, so she did her own song, she put it out with a different video. And then she also did that one. Like, different. does it have the same lyrics? Does it have the same chorus? Yeah, kind of, kind of the chorus were like the, the same, same, but the lyrics, you know, you know so you, you won't know who actually doctored something. So okay. I don't know if she actually said the fact. So all I just did was like, like Solomon, don't worry, bring your own come. <laughs> <laughs> you said, bring your own come. So I was playing it too. So food is ready, food is ready was on and got to, uh, good, good to go, her own. Became better because you know I think she had a little bit of some soul thing to it, and then this one was like pure African, and she's always African, and so. Yeah. But what I'm saying right now, it was later she got to know. It's, you're like there was a part she didn't even know I was the one that championed the other song, <laughs> the other song mm -hmm. that I became because I was always eating that one. The food is ready, and how was just normal play, and so that was just it. There was nothing going on at that time. Just give me your song, so so, but. How, how did it now start happening? Okay, it was way back on um, uh, 2000 and... 2010. Yes, 2010. It's very funny, you know. After a very long time, um, I, I, I was just checking the internet. I just saw, I said, oh my God. I just said it, seeing some, it was just like yes. reading the story of the person. I, I, seriously, it was not, I, I wasn't like, let me go and check it. Yeah. I was just like getting to the internet and I just started saying, I was like, oh my God. So I just like going back, I'm like, whoa, this person has been going through this. So I just, I was like, hello, just called her. You know, that day was Blackberry. Like, hey, how you doing? What's, what's up here? I just, what's been going on? And you didn't tell me anything, you know? We've been talking and you didn't tell me this has been happening to you. So, you know, and then and I was okay. Let's 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 see now. Let's see, you know. And then um, we now we met. Uh, so when we met, me I'm, I'm always a money money thinking person. So uh, when we met, I was just like, forget about this. Let's make money, man. Let's make money. So um, give an idea. Let's do this one. And I said, do you know that you can do this? So like, and, and then thank goodness, politics was around the corner. I was like, this this that boy do some. Politics now, call this person up now. Ah, this person, ah, yes, it is. You know, so truly, truly, she did. And just walk. So, what do we do? I'm like, okay, let's do a jingle. Let's do this. So, my was just walk, 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 walk. Let's just make some cool cash. And then she started doing those things. And that's how we just became very close again. So, it was mm. like, it was depending on me for some things. And then 
Oh, yeah. uh, there are certain things you'll be thinking. Now, seriously, this is this is this is serious. You know, I, I'll be thinking about something. We're not going out, or so this is just uh, OAP and an artist kind of relationship. But there's something that I'm thinking. I'm like, oh God, I need this. You won't believe it. Oh, sh because she knows my place. She's already gone home and do it. How come home? We're like, uh oh, who did this? Like, oh, Kathy came and did this. Why? Well, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell her. How did she know that I was in this? You know, and the same thing was also going on in, in her. I would just feel something. I was just like, do this. Just do this. She would just tell me something. I just, just do it. I'll just do it. And finally, that's what she's praying for. And I'm mm. doing it. So it's like we're just helping each other without even talking. And somehow, somehow, you know, I was like, man, I ain't going to miss this. And she was like, yeah, she ain't going to miss this. And, you know, um, we actually got married without even knowing. Seriously. <laughs> How do you mean? <laughs> Please explain that part. <laughs> Serious, you know, when you marry, you just, you, you're, it's like you're covered, and then when you're now in your, when you're now traveled, and then now you're just sitting down. But when, the, when we're in America, that's when we now realize, so don't marry you. <laughs> no, serious. Because we were, you know, it, it, we were friends, and we were just close. We didn't want, what we're doing all the ceremony, we're just ceremony. It, it, it wasn't like we're married, but when we now traveled, and we're not, both of us together. Okay, this, this is all that thing again, you know. Uh, I had my brother, she also had a brother. So we had family, it was like big things. The house was big, everybody was. So you wouldn't really, somehow you wouldn't feel that you were, you know. Uh -huh. So but when we now traveled, it was just me and her. Uh -huh. So that was when we now dawned on us that, like, yeah, you guys, you know, so you don't marry. It was just one day, she, she was one that said, he said, hey, you should don't, why you don't marry so? Also, I like, you. You, you know, just playfully like that. And, oh, man. It was, it was serious. I always say this, that the best time of my life till this moment with, with times shared with Kefi. Oh. Mm. I'm telling you. Uh, it, was, it was a perfect match. Seriously. It was just something like, you know, uh, there was a particular time it got to my life that I was just thinking, this way you beat me safe. Not in big sense again. But she, she now became the sense. So every time I'm going to the studio, I'm always thinking about her. I was getting tired before, like, man, let me do something. So if you check me, I always say that I actually invented a word called multipreneur. Where you are what? an a multipreneur. Okay. You're multi-entrepreneur. So uh, like you do so many things. So I just found that OEP is not paying like that. So let me mm. do something. So I was just doing some other things. But this time, you know, she now made the OAP, Jaumo, so that made the thing now more made sense. sense. Yeah. So I'm going to the office. She was always on my mind because whenever I want to play her song, I want to, you know, you know I, I prepare it. You know, <laughs> I give it the hype. So people want to listen and, you know, just get into the hearts of people. And I'm always using my connection again also to call people, please, say, she's dropping on do song, please, let's do this. So it just, it just made sense. It was just, yeah. it was just a click. It was just... And then going to the studio, I didn't even know she was actually teaching me something because I I, I know music, but I've, I've never been in the studio where the artists are actually doing the music. So when we're going to the studio, she would, she would like, let's go to the studio. Yeah. I'll meet the producer. So I'll, be, I'll be looking at them. Mm, so this is how to do it. And then I'm hearing something. I said, no, no, no. Forget that thing you're saying. Bring it, bring it, bring it. You know, so I became a contributor to... You know, music. I so said, she that made me like, okay, you, you, can, you can do it. And then the biggest one was that, okay, there was um, a company from America that came. They wanted to do a, a jingle. I've never sang before. I've never done anything before. But, you know, somebody just believed that, man, you do much. You know, you're too much exactly. not to be known. So, and, and, and it was a jingle. You know, a lot of people were pitching for this. And she, we, we were also pitching. She said, Teddy, you can do this. Uh, so let's do it. So I decided I made the right. I wrote, I wrote my stuff and then someone would just come in and say, let's try it like this. So we tried it and you believe it. We actually won the pitch. Wow. And I also rapped. <laughs> and the good, the, 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 what, what, what made sense was that when they were listening to it, they were telling her, because you saw the, you saw the, um, the, 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 the there's always the right stuff. Right? They were asking her, is that, where did you get this American rapper from? I'm telling you, what this was. And you are the American rapper. This was the American rapper, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my very first single. So 
it just it just made me like okay so i can see mm. Mm. okay so at what time did you guys get married what year like uh, the ceremony the ceremony yes yeah. We don't, we don't pass it when it says that. Oh, okay. I don't know. I think yeah. they used to oh, no, no, no. We, we've, we've got to, I said, I said okay. we got married without even knowing. Okay. We actually got what married. What does that mean, though? Okay. Like, yeah. pastor, okay. Okay. you guys got married in your dreams or what happened? <laughs> no, no. We, I mean, you, you, were, you were so, you were just so yeah. in awe. Yeah, so into each other that. That even the ceremony didn't even make, like, a it difference. was not, yes. It wasn't like, you were, you, it was just like one of those activities. You didn't even know. You know, that was it. Okay, this is it. We said, okay, we rejuvenated the, that was 2010. Friendship, yes. Yeah, the yeah. friendship. I became very close to her from 2010 all mm. the way to 2012. And then um, we just, just made that. Um, she's actually, that's why she made 13, 13 very important. She said, you know what, let's, let's do this. 13, 13. So that's why when I wanted to start my stuff, I started 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19. She actually made 13, 13 for a second. Let's do it 13, 13. So 13, 2013, on the 13th. Oh, okay. That, that's when we got married. So just 13, 13. And that was that it. Was so it. we actually got married. Um, so how long was the marriage? Yeah, it was just uh, one year plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, one year plus. So at what point, what happened towards the end? Yeah, we traveled and we're planning to um this Nigeria don't be tired person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you're so talented in Nigeria and you're doing so many things like it's not really if you don't really know certain set of people, you know, and especially when the the, the you know the, the person she actually supported didn't win again. So okay. There was so many pressure coming on her to switch, and then she wasn't ready to switch because she, like, I believe in this person. So basically, like, let's move to a place where we'll be appreciated. And so we moved to America, and I'm telling you, America, Canada, we, it was just like, man, this is the place we gotta be. We gotta be here. So we're planning um, our relocation. Yes, relocation. We're actually planning relocation. If um, the incident hasn't happened, I don't think I'll be here again because I was really, really out. I was like, man, I gotta go. So, um, but uh, I came back. I, I, okay, I left her in America, so I came back to Nigeria to come and like put some things in order because we had some new business here. So let's just let's just like restructure the business so that even though when we're not around, I yeah, mean the things still be, function. Yes, yeah, so that was what I actually came to you know to do, and um, I came back. But she didn't come back. Yeah, so that, that so was, what happened? Um, she was in a she, that that you know something. It's like I'm still thinking about it till date. You know, this was somebody that was not ill. So when you hear about all this that she was sick, she was having this. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we actually you know after some time now we're like okay, let's let's start thinking about you know having our own family. Yeah, we're actually thinking about that. But uh, that would be when we are finally settled. Really, yes, finally uh, settled, uh, not relocated. So going through all those normal stuff. So uh, from California, the, the plane was headed towards Chicago. Okay. But because of this emergency, so we had to, to quickly, yes, yeah, so that's stopped. So the next stop was Las Vegas. Okay. So that was why they, they stopped, stopped at that. Uh, but, but the plane was headed uh, to uh, uh, Chicago. So. That was it. So, so, but according to the said, she just had a, a lungs failure. Okay. Yeah, one of the lungs just failed. And that was it. That was it, yeah. So, you go to the hospital? Go to the hospital, saw her, she was there, unconscious. And, you know, talked, like, talking, talk, 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 talk pray, pray, pray. Sent message to Nigeria, Nigerians, and all over the world joined in prayers, and we were praying. You know, we, we kept talking, and it was a particular time. I, I was just telling her, I was just teasing her. I was like, "Finally, I have seen Las Vegas. So you must see Las Vegas." You know, and then she just held me. She was unconscious. She was she unconscious. Was, yes. Held you like and gripped you. Yes, she now gripped me. Ah, when she gripped me, I was like, "Hey!" So that was when I don't know. I, I don't know. There was a particular time, and I said, "Yes, yeah, she's responding to, uh, to." She was responding to. Uh, you because, went on for, social media. For a very long time. No, no, no. I, I, 
I didn't go on social media, but you know, her friends were around. Okay. Some of her friends came from London, America, and people were, there were a whole lot of people. There were a whole lot of people. We have, man, <laughs> Kefi was big. Yeah. I'm telling you, you don't know, she was big. The, the, the hospital was always filled mm. up. I'm telling you, we were, they were always disturbing. So there were all, a whole lot of um, social media things that were going on that I don't even know about. People oh. were just, you know, but well, I, what, what I tried to control was taking pictures. Yes. But they weren't, you know, you can't tell people not the type, so things were always going on. So when, I held, when she held me, before I knew what was happening, people were very put it out that means she's responding to uh, the treatment. Yeah. And you pray, sir. Ah, but, cut the long story short, after 15 days of being unconscious, uh, yeah, they, they just went. Went straight and knocked out his head. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Ted. And that was June 12th. 20. June 12th. 20 what? 13. Wow. 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 <laughs> I don't even know where to start from, but thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this story. Thank you. 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 I know, like I said, this is a difficult thing to do. You know, it's, I don't even know what to make of you people coming and responding to this. It's, I'm very honored. I feel so privileged that you want to share. But the later interpretation in terms of, you know, when Chinozo was saying, you know, she felt like a failure and things like that. For me, mine was, how do I show up and try to help people move in their lives. Because I'm a transformational life coach, I speak and deal with a lot of people who um, are broken, right? And my job is to motivate, in inspire, inspire, empower, help you to deal with your dark times in order for you to find your light. Yeah. And I remember having a conversation with myself that, God, I can't do this. I am going to be a fraud to come mm. on my social media, media platforms, to speak to any of my clients, um, to speak to any of my subscribers, and try and tell them how to overcome difficult times when I am, I am in a very difficult time. And I'll never forget the day that everything changed for me when I sat down and I said, God, I will make a deal with you. You help me to get through this time of grief. And I will make sure that I use this pain for a purpose. Mm. That my tears will not be in vain. vain. I won't just cry because I'm crying. But I will cry. But in my crying, those tears will speak a message of deliverance, healing, change, transformation to whoever I encounter. And that was really how I had to interpret it. And I, I remember sending an email to my subscribers. I had about a thousand subscribers on my email list. And, you know, normally if you're on my email list, it's very, let's go, very, you know. And this time I decided, I could just be you. Be yeah. vulnerable. Allow people to see your heart. Allow people to see your pain. Take them through that journey because it's actually through that journey that you're going through that so many people are going to find their healing. And that was probably why you saw a lot of my posts on yeah. my Instagram because I had made the decision that I'm not going to pretend that I'm this superhero, mm. that I'm, I'm this, you know, I'm able to just come back and be mm. like, come on, let's go, let's smash those goals. I am going to show that I'm a human person that falls, that has times of brokenness. But I will demonstrate in my journey that even in the midst of your darkness, there will always be a light that wow. will shine, that wow. will overcome any level of darkness. And that was really how um, I have been able to, uh, through the grace of God, really touch many people's lives around the world without even me knowing. I've had people from different parts of the world 
send me messages. Um, there's an interview that I did some time ago on um, Africa Magic that goes all across Africa. Yeah. And every now and then, I will just get an influx of DMs and influx of followers saying how much they have been touched by my story and my journey and my healing. And for me, that is how I've interpreted it. That's how I've been able to find meaning in it. And like I said at the beginning when I came up, that we are used to in society being told just shh, yeah. don't cry too much. I actually remember when I was in my 40 days of confinement, my mom's friends who were very loving and well-meaning would say, is there love crying? Stop crying. Move on. This is this is in me, the 40 trying days. To, me trying to even process that. Wait, hold on. I, I, am I now a widow? Is, is that what my title is now? No more misses. I'm now right. So I'm in the process of still trying to heal. And you know, people will say to me, You have to stop crying, or you just have to get up, you just have to move on, you just have to. And then, like, you know, Chino's over say that you, you get to a place where, okay, let me just now be happy with myself. People are like, ah, is it not just five minutes ago that your husband that you're now dancing? I remember I posted something on my oh Instagram my God. and I was listening to a song when I was dancing because music is actually one of the most therapeutic ways to heal when you're in pain. And I was dancing to a song that is a silly Afrobeat song. And I had um, uh, so many messages in my DM and one in particular said, I don't understand. You seem so happy that your husband is dead. Did you actually really love him? And that's, that message took me aback so much, but I used that as an opportunity to educate her that you can't judge someone's ability to grieve with your own understanding of grief. Mm. And one of the beautiful mm. things about that particular incident is that she later on became a mentee of mine. Oh, and she's wow. somebody that I have, you know, oh. nurtured on through. And she's done, she's gone on to do so many wonderful things. But if I had been offended, um, hurt by that message, I would never have had the opportunity to actually have a direct impact and educate her because eventually her father passed away. And she then began to understand the methods of my healing that she was able to, um, you know, use in her own wow. life that actually helped her to get through her own time. So, I mean, I'm not sure if I have answered the question. I want to be like you. Firstly, I want to be like you when I grow up <laughs> because somebody saying that to me and then I'm using time to educate them. I'm not educating anybody. <laughs> Go and jump and hug transform. <laughs> That's the next thing I was going to say. Do you get Because, you know, like people, people, social media gives people the right to just barge into your life and dictate or tell you how to live, how to grieve, how to walk, how to stand, how to do. You know, so sometimes, I'm sorry, I'm not as calm as you are. Sometimes I remove this therapist something. I'm not wearing any hats today. I want to be a, a, a bibish <laughs> heart. Do you get Anabi? Uncle, please, can you F off my DM? And if you are dragging your leg, I shall block you. You know, so, but that is a good thing. That's what I'm just trying to say, that you at that point in time was, you know, maybe I should say that, do you think that you're, you're being a coach, you know, or being a single mom or going through all the hardships in your life prepared you for that particular time? Yeah, I mean, if you remember when I first started, um, I had talked about different levels of experiences that I've had. And whilst I don't think anything really prepares, prepares you, you for death, especially when it's an unexpected death, mm -hmm. um, you never really are prepared. Okay. But I do believe that I have been granted a grace mm. to face hardships mm. and find meaning and purpose in that hardship to uh, transform it as a leverage for my next level. Mm. And I think this is really where transformation comes. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's one thing to be in pain, but it's also another thing to understand that there is a meaning behind your pain. Mm. People don't heal because they don't want to see beyond mm. the that pain. pain. 
Yes. And when you don't see beyond that pain, you can never, ever, ever move, move away. on. You can't. Yeah. You will be stuck in that time zone. And for as long as you are stuck in that time zone, guess what? You're actually dead. Mm. Because the only time you live is in the now. If mm. you're stuck in your past, if you're stuck in worrying about the future, you are not living because the future is not here and the past has gone. It's only your mm. now. And so part of what has helped me is constantly bringing myself to this moment. And so moments where I am happy, oh girl, I celebrate that I am happy. Mm. I really max it out. I treasure it. I soak it into my fiber and into my bones because mm. I know that hmm, my next moment, I may not be happy. Mm. And so let me treasure what I have right now. So and I think huh. that has been part of the formula for how I am going through my process. I know I seem really upbeat and you probably think, ah, oh, she's together. okay. But there are moments in my house where I cry. There are moments I'm like, God, I still don't understand. There, there's not a day that passes by I don't think about my husband. There's not one day. Um, but I choose. And this is what we all need to understand. Every single one of us here had a choice. If you're choosing to stay in a place of pain, if you're in pain, if you're in turmoil, it's a choice. If you're in release and freedom, it's a choice. It's all a choice. Um, and I constantly, every day, make a choice that, Banke, you know what? You're going to live in the now. Your wow. tomorrow is not guaranteed. Just enjoy this moment. Wow. So that, that's really Thank you. <laughs> so, Chin and so now, you know, I've heard how it's still, yeah, it's difficult, I know, for the three of you. It's, you know, people process grief and pain differently, depending on your you know, temperament, persona, you know, um, how recent it is, how capacity do you get? So that's why I always tell people that, you know, you don't, you don't judge this person's pain with this person's pain. You don't say this one did, you know, so, uh -huh. you know, so, but what I just want to, want to ask you is, firstly, what was the, you know, because I hear when people say they lose, especially a spouse, it's like, I feel empty. I feel naked, yeah. you know, like, Two became one, you know. So at that point, what was your most important thought? Was it that I lost a loved one because I love him? Or some people say when some people grieve, they're not grieving because they love the person. They're grieving because of the security that person gave them. They're grieving because of the money that person gave them. You know, they're not really grieving for the love or, you know. So what was your own point of grief at that particular time? <laughs> Thank you for that question. That's such a powerful question and it's very real. Yes. You know, and for me, it wasn't so much as I was losing the comfort okay. or the covering that marriage provided because obviously now everybody was directly watching me and you know how society just looks at women yes and then the reality that you're single again in fact mm. you know when it hit me was one yeah. one one single again my first week at work mm. and then someone was like baby ah oh, he doesn't even know what he did <laughs> <laughs> i'm like ba like ba you <laughs> like me me see why <laughs> ah and it's it's also crazy because I had to get a ring and I was wearing it. You weren't wearing a ring before. There's a culture that says you throw the ring into the grave. Okay. And that's one of the hardest things to do. Okay. But I got one. After okay. And it's done my ring. Just to reduce people disturbing and asking questions and what have you. In fact, taking off that ring was another battle. <laughs> on its own. <laughs> on its own. I probably went for like another year before I finally took it off. Just okay. being in denial or whatever yeah. it was. So for me, it was the one person I wanted to talk to, the one person I had dreamt to share my life with, mm. the one person who understood me, like 
you just feel like he gets me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then that person isn't here anymore. Mm. So it's more like you're disappointed. So mm. for me, it was like, I was just disappointed in myself, in God, in in the moment. Like, I had never in my life dreamed, like, who would think? Nobody, nobody goes into marriage thinking that, okay, one day, one day, and it's weird because we we had this conversation in December, and it was so random. It was so like we were just talking about you know people dying and leaving, and then I was like, ah, Omo, you're not going anywhere. Me and you are here till old age, and we sit by you know side to side and hold our hands. I was like, okay, God, we're ready to go, and we take off, and that was what I said. And I was like, mm. there was an argument of. Is it the, who's supposed to bury her? And it's like, oh, no, you, you're supposed to bury me now. You're younger than me. It's the one that's supposed to bury I'm like, who's burying you? We're going to sit down here. And when I'm saying, ready, I'll say, okay, God, now we're ready to go. <laughs> and then we'll take off. So I, I didn't have, I didn't go into marriage thinking that I was going to be a widow. Mm. And trust me, nobody likes that title. Yeah. So it was so much like, I was really disappointed. And... The crazy thing is, you asked me uh, if there was a premonition or something. Yeah. And I remember I had a dream. And in that dream, it was like, ah, people were asking me out. I'm like, are you full mad? I'm mad. Why? They're like, you don't know. I'm like, no, what? Your husband, eh? if you see the tongues, I, I, in I, the I, dream. I dream. I started blasting the tongues oh. to real life. I was like, ah. was it ill at that time? Nothing. There was nothing. So it's like, ah. Madam, you are disturbing my sleep. I entered the bathroom. Started. Continue. I entered the parlor. Continue. So, it's almost like, you know, I cast food, cast, bind, did everything. We even talked about it. And I was like, he was like, why are we leaving the stupid? I was like, ah, this is what I dreamt though. We held hands, agreed, did everything. How, how, how long after did he pass away from that dream? Like a year. Okay. Yeah. Well, we had we didn't cancel it. Yes. We had cancelled it, so we didn't doubt. So for me, it wasn't so much that oh yes, as much as I miss that, I miss having a husband. I miss the covering that having a husband provides. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's the bills to pay, yeah. shared responsibilities and what have you, but that's not even what it is because I'm standing here today. Yeah. But I was just really disappointed. Wow. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. You know, so Teddy, you know, did you, um, when that happened, because she didn't, you know, there was no goodbye, there was no enough time. Like, when she, she slumped or you heard, so it was 15 days after that she passed away, you know, did you ever think that I could lose my wife? Maybe, you know at 60 or at, did you have a premonition did you dream did anybody make a joke did were there you know sometimes they'll say people that want to die no and you know they'll be saying stuff do you know people who like maybe celebrities that have died sometimes people will play one minute video where they like Tosin Buckner for instance there was a the last interview she had with Trudy where she said when I'm dead you know um, I, I want to live my life now because anybody can die at any time. No matter how many people, uh, how much people love you, they will not follow you to the grave. So people, she was laughing and like, please leave my cola with me. Let me drink it and enjoy it now. I don't know. You know, so people were like, maybe she knew, you know, maybe something. Was there, when you remember now in retrospect, was there any time like that when she drew, you know, dropped nugget or you, you know, something like that? Um, no, there was, there was no moment like that. Um, but you know, you we, we you talk about these things you now. Yeah. Some of the things we just talked about playfully. Yeah. You know, um, like I like I said, when we're married, I'm like I'm married now. So somehow, somehow, we've actually talked about who's going to die first. Mm-hmm. Seriously, I'm, I'm I'm going to be very serious here. We've actually talked about who's going to die first, and I, I was like, I, even me, I was like, because of my age and all this, I was always thinking that it was going to be me. And she was like, no, no, no. I'm like, geez, that's what we can be now. You know, go compare you. You do that just playfully like that. So that was, that was just it. So there was, there was no, I, I never thought in my wildest, you know, reality right now that 
I was I was because the thing is for me it actually took time for me to actually get married too. So, People were like, go and marry, go and marry. Like the, mm. the evil, mm. <laughs> like top 10 uh, eligible, eligible bachelors, bachelors of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the 2000s, you know. So uh, I was just taking my time. And then finally, God just gave me you one know, person. that one person that I'm, I'm not, I'm one person that I don't really have friends. So uh, I, have, I have people I talk to. I have people around, but they're not friends. So you just think I have friends. Just a few, few, one of few, few people as friends. And then that best of the best friend that you now have. She's one person I'm so, so free to talk to. I'm telling you, there's certain things I'll just tell her. Well, I'm just about that. Because I'm very, very, you know, I don't know, you know like this, they say Scorpios are very secretive. I don't do, I don't do the, you know, the zodiac sign, but you know, but so, somehow, somehow I'm beginning to check these things out now because seriously, <laughs> Yeah, I am very so me. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. I, I just I'm not comfortable just telling people anything about me. But Her. I'm surprised. You know, you should, you're surprising yourself that you're telling somebody something. You're not feeling bad about it. Like mm. you're not even thinking. So those were the signs that no, no, this person is, is no. The this, one. this is the one. Yes, the one. This is definitely the one. So for me, I never had that thought that he would have that this. So how, when it happened, mind. because I could hear Bankers, you know, how she grieved. Chinonso, we're still hearing. You, as a man, how, what happened? Like, how did you grieve? Did you punch the wall? <laughs> did you go hate God? Did you, what did you do? No, I didn't hate God. Uh, I'll just say that it's something... It's still something. It's still something. I'm. You know, I'm, I'm just like. I'm. I'm just a little bit slaty. You know, the slay sounds just be drawn, and you're just like looking at life, and just like trying to like ask God. It's like it's like you know, ask God, God, why? Mm. You know. So seriously, that that's that's the thing. Like because this is top notch believer who's mm. doing God's work. And God is doing your work. We're doing your work, and. Uh, just believe that there's so many things that we want to conquer. So why would you just want to take this? You know, you're talking to God and you're like, God, why did you do this? You know, look at all the plans that we've had to conquer the world to make sure that we do this. So now, are you now saying that the batting has been passed or something like that? You know, something like, it, 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 it's a why me kind of situation. Oh. Why now? You know, and... The, 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 the saddest part is, it's like you walked, walked, put things, and things are not like structured. And it's like it's about that time for you to just, you know, just chill and let this thing, and then suddenly, pow, that was what happened, you know? I'm telling you, certain things have happened, and it was like it is time now for rest mm. and somebody just went to rest mm. Mm. i'm telling you it was like she walked i'm telling you she's walked she's walked and it was time for just like for to enjoy you know and then it's just it's, so i'm just i'm just i'm just sitting down and thinking god why so that's that situation i'm still in it yes. i'm telling you i'm still in it so I don't know. I, I'm seriously, I'm every every time I just I was like, why, God, what happened? You know, especially that you know, like like like, like some people that lost people, they they, they, they we, we didn't talk. The last time we spoke was on the plane. I I, I, I can still see that picture. I, I I still have it. Hey, this is my friend Tina. I know, you know, playing and all this stuff. So that's what I still have. And that was just it. So she didn't tell me goodbye. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, God. <sighs> so, so that's the situation I'm in. I'm, I'm still in it. But that doesn't mean that I'm not better. Live my life. Just be happy. Enjoy myself. Um, bury myself into jobs. Right now, I'm 20 times working harder. Uh, you just make sure that 
I'm tired. I get home. I just want to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's that's how I live my life now. And mm-hmm. but, but once in a while, I just uh, try to enjoy. But that's it. You know, like I always say, healing is a progressive journey. Healing, healing for some people is a lifelong journey. You know, I, I once interviewed a man on my radio station, and he lost his wife on um, on the day she was giving birth. You know, to their son or daughter, I can't remember, but the child was alive, the wife died, you know, so, and they met like three months before, got married, and then she got pregnant, died on the, you know, um, giving birth table. And three years after, he had remarried, had two kids. So I was interviewing him to talk about the death of his first wife. And you can still hear how raw how real, how hurtful it is. You know, so I was trying to ask him that. But your people will feel you're married now, you know, should the pain not have re- reduced? And he was able to explain to me, you cannot replace anybody with anybody. Yes, I am married now. Am I happy with my wife? Of course. I like her. I love her. I love our kids. But this person was also a human being that was real. And that experience was a real thing, you know. And this person is a coach. Is, do you get what I'm trying to say? So that's why I'm just trying to explain to people if, you know, because sometimes people say, I'll never heal you, you know. If they hear that this person remarries, they're like, hey, we do that day, I talk that day. You should say, do you get what I'm trying to say? So healing is a lifelong journey. So one question I want to ask is, how did people respond outsiders how did they respond to your friends your family members your co-workers and then how do you what is the proper way because me i'm still at a loss at that you know i'm in shock so when somebody dies i'm shocked so i don't know what to say should i say hi should i call should i send a message do they think i beg you are part of those people who don't care but are trying to form that you care so what what do you think okay so first of all just to point that um, I had a premonition. Oh, wow. Really, really strange, actually. It was in the morning. This was like two days before. Um, he had sent me a picture of him having a massage. And he, li- he actually sent me a picture. He did a selfie and he sent me a picture and he actually looked like how he did look when he finally was passed away. And I remember opening the picture. That was the first thing that jumped at me in the WhatsApp. Mm. And I said, Jesus, babe, this picture looks horrible. I'm going to delete it. It looks like you're, you're dead. And he, we, you know, joked about it. We laughed wow. about it. And, and I think this wow. is where my anger with God really kicked in. And I will answer your question in a mm-hmm. short while. Because during the time whilst I was in London, I was praying very specifically about my husband. Um, certain things that we were praying for, trusting God for, believing for. And, you know, I, I felt I was connected with God. I felt like, at least God, come now. Should be, I'm praying with you and all that. It's, even if you're trying to get my attention, maybe that picture was actually an attention thing for me. But my mm. spirit didn't grab it. I didn't, it didn't click that, ah, maybe I should pray, pray. and enforce, you know, like how... And so I was angry at God that, God, even if this was a sign that you had sent me to say, Banke, pray for this particular thing, and I didn't pray about it, why couldn't you prompt me? Why couldn't you give me something else? Why couldn't you just let my spirit get an understanding of it? Um, So that's just by the way. Yes. Thank you. To answer your question about... um, how do people respond? So I had multiple responses. Obviously, my social media was completely bombarded. So I shut down my social media. Um, I had put an announcement on my Facebook and on my Instagram because um, I didn't want people to start finding out elsewhere, especially his friends. A lot of his friends started calling me. Is it true? Please tell us it's not true. And, you know, when you are trying to ask yourself is it it's true, true. the and last then thing you people, want is some strangers else. you know having a meltdown that is it true so i had shut off from in, um, my social media um my my friends were amazing okay. my family was amazing um i think 
the biggest, maybe the thing that probably would make me cry is my father's reaction. Because he was so pained that his baby girl had finally found happiness. And so his grief actually made my grief harder. harder. Because I said to myself, God, we even got married on his birthday because it was such a special mm. thing for him. I, like, I'm a daddy's girl. Mm. And I'm from day one, I've been his princess, even up to oh. today, you know. So handling his grief, and he would call me, he would cry, he wasn't eating, and I couldn't deal with him grieving. That I couldn't deal with that. Um, and so when, when other people are grieving, you have to find a way of protecting your own self so you don't get lost in everybody else's pain. Mm. Um, and I remember saying to my dad, I said, Daddy, I need you to stop crying mm. because if you don't stop crying, crying, you're not going to help me heal. And, and how I old to, was he at the time? Was he very elderly? Yeah, my dad is, um, he's going to be 87 this year. Okay. My husband passed away about two years ago now. Okay. In February, it'll be two years. Um, and so what I would say is when you have someone who is going through grief, it's a sensitive to hide. Yes. And there isn't actually a right or wrong way because I believe that everybody is actually well-meaning. No one is coming to say, ah, God, let me hear your gist. Eh? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I genuinely believe that even if it comes out in the worst way, it's still coming from a good place. Yeah. But what I would say is when you are trying to console someone, sometimes your silence is okay. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. One of the things I could not stand people telling me was, God will give you the fortitude to bear. Or, um, it is well. Or, you know, those were the phrases that if I could slap you, <laughs> can, I, can I chip on it? Yes, God will give you another husband. Oh, in fact, I had an auntie that said, um, I wow. should throw my rings away, and that within one year, God will give me a new husband. I was like, wait, hold on. So I think there are certain things that you just need to be sensitive wow. towards. Um, I was very blessed to have very supportive friends. Okay. Um, even my social media, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually really blessed with a community of lovers, people who love me, people who I love. And so I really do believe that part of my healing process has been just that energy of love that I've been surrounded mm. by. But I think it's important to... Don't overdo it. If you don't know what to say, it's okay. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes so your presence is enough. enough. Sometimes there will be a word that comes in season that you can say that will just minister to that person. And I had those times where people would say certain things that really eased the pain. But don't force it mm. and just let it be natural is, is what I okay. would say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So, Chinon, so, um, <laughs> how would you want people to um, treat you? One, yes, yes, because the reason why I'm asking that is that for somebody like me at that particular time, I do not know, should I comment? Should I not comment? Should I call her? I had your number. I didn't know, should I send message? Should I? So, and then when I'm now seeing you for the first time after that, or hearing, or, you know, or we're having a conversation. What, what am I supposed to say? Oh, I'm sorry you lost somebody. Or should I just move on as if nothing happened? 
and just because somebody said i don't like being treated as if you know that she doesn't like to be reminded all the time yeah. mm -hmm. so what was your own disposition on that so um losing losing anybody i mean i i have a friend who lost her dog and she called me you know, it didn't even occur to me because she was like, oh, I just lost my dog. Can you come over? <laughs> and I, like, initially, I was like, oh, come on. It, was, it took me like two weeks to understand that she wanted me to come over because she probably thought that I had experienced loss and I would understand <laughs> what she was going through. But like, I, I actually didn't get it because... This was a dog that was a nuisance to me. Anytime I go to visit her, he would all like be all over me. And I'm like, no, don't go near me. I'm ruining my dress. And you know, but I loved, I, I love dogs. But well, for me, I came, she's a stylist. So okay. whenever I'm coming to her house, it's to try out an outfit that I'm going to use on the red carpet to go out. And this dog is like trying to ruin the dress. I'm like, go away. So I wasn't even happy that he left. But my point is, you want to be surrounded by people you love or people who can just understand your pain. Because sometimes people don't know what to say and they make it worse by opening their mouth and saying, no, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Even when it's coming from a good place. So you just have to be able to have a filter. Like I said, I'd always weigh whatever it was I was hearing at the end of the day with God's plan for me or what the word of God says about me. So if you're saying something that doesn't... I don't, but I just know where to keep it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So to your question, uh -huh. I would actually want, I wouldn't want to be babied, okay. to be honest. Okay. Because everybody is trying to let go. You can't let go of that memory. Okay. But you're trying to let go of the pain. You're trying to let go of the negative emotions that, you know, it's, it triggers. Some people say that after some time, you will look back with fond memories and with happiness. Okay. You would have the fond memories and those those memories would actually make you hurt that you don't have them anymore. anymore. So I wouldn't want a reminder, a reminder, a constant reminder like I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to live. I'm trying to you're going to work for crying out. I'm trying to pay my bills. I'm here because I have to work or because I have something to do and you're taking me back to that sure. one thing that That's can hinder. Like, I'd have situations where I'm on set, I'm filming or shooting or just taking pictures for a product. And for me, you said music helped Health. you heal. But for me, it wasn't. Okay. And so what, what, I, what I started doing was now playing all kinds of crazy music. Okay. So I don't know if... Could it be it, because it was a music yeah. person? Yes, I don't, yes. yes. it Funny wasn't enough, gospel. Actually. It was, I didn't want to hear any yeah. gospel, love. Yeah. No. Don't hold me now. No. <laughs> back to back, anything yeah. that just sounded like, you know. And yeah. it was like, let's just be... Yeah. Say Alanta or anything, <laughs> any, any song that just doesn't make sense. So, but yeah. did you unleash at people because you know people grieve differently? Yeah. Like, did you shout at people? To, to be, to be just honest, mellow? there are even certain people that I just have like I don't like relate with or relate with. I do not intentionally go into their space because sometimes they don't have the right things to say to me. Okay, and you know, I had to let go of those people who just negative energy or who just don't say the right thing like i remember one time it was around the period of the memorial and i had posted a picture and then someone was like oh how are you hmm some people are talking they said you're posting picture i'm like i don't understand this is like how many years after if it was the reverse dude could be married he hmm. could have a baby in the bun or you know like a baby on the way and i just posted a picture and yeah reminding me that oh. i shouldn't i don't like i get not, it yeah so i as much as possible we want to be treated normally people who are grieving want to be treated normally it's unnecessary expectation sometimes that you have of them to sit down wallow in self-pity you see the one that's trying to make ends meet or trying to work and you're like oh so sorry about you don't, and, and it's crazier because sometimes people that are telling you sorry don't even know you or didn't even know you when it happened. Yes. So what are you sorry for? For, okay. Uh, now that's, that's a good yeah. question. If, if it was someone who maybe, you know, we had mutual friends or who I met through him, 
it would maybe be necessary Makes sense. for you to yes. say, say sorry. something or we haven't seen it happened even then. I know that it can actually be weird for people, mm. but to be honest, it's just better to act normal around them. And if they want to bring it up, let it be from them, from my own end. Let me be the one to say, to start talking about him. And then you can just... Okay, then now... As yeah. opposed to... You... Oh, ah, sorry, you... <laughs> because as much as possible, I don't like to throw pity parties. I don't... I try to just... Can we all just be happy? <laughs> you know, even if we're not happy, can I just choose to be happy? Yeah. I, it's not pretending. It's not faking it to make it. It's just energy is so important. Yes. Energy is so important. And then there's, there's isolation while you're grieving. And it's very important sometimes. You need to... You would experience it because, first of all, you're already lonely because you're missing that one person. Yeah. You could be in the midst of a crowd and you're still lonely and you still feel isolated but you it's important that you fall deeply in love with yourself again mm. with, yourself with yourself again. again you need to be so in tune with yourself sometimes we try to escape that isolation we mm. try to escape ourselves that's why you see sometimes i'm listening to hardcore music that is yeah to take you away to escape the pain you, you need to come to a place where you find peace with it you have to find peace with your situation. You have to find peace with yourself. You need to get to that point. So even when, because the truth is, people are always going to want to react negatively, probably not say the right thing. When you are at peace with yourself, it doesn't matter what they say, say. or what they don't say because mm. you've taken the power out of their hand. Yes. You're now in tune with yourself. So as much as it would be nice for people to get it right, say the right thing, you need to take charge of your emotion and know that they won't always get it right. Yeah. You're here for work, you're here for business, and someone can just come and be like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And you start crying. And you've lost it. You can't even... So Function. you need to protect your energy and, you know, thank you. find the beauty thank in you, your thank process. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Teddy, quickly, do you... Have you gotten your answers? Like, do you see a purpose in this? Do you think... You know, because I'm hearing you're asking, why me? So is it that until that question is answered, or why did this happen? Because now some people say some things happen for a reason. Maybe someday we'll find out the reason. You know, so is, are you, do you think you're ever going to move on from that, you know, posture of she didn't say goodbye? Why me? You know, like, do you think that's ever going to happen? That's um, a deep question. Yeah. Because uh, I, don't, I don't think that's going to ever happen. Seriously, I don't okay. think that's going to ever happen. But the thing that is, um, I'm alive now. So okay. um, I'm looking at myself now, okay? Um, because the truth of the matter is like, you know, it's like that was, that was yesterday. So we have today and then we also have tomorrow. So whatever you do today, that's what will propel you to what you will have tomorrow. So what I have right now is today and tomorrow. There's nothing I'm going to do again that will ever bring tomorrow back. So oh, yesterday you, back. Yeah, that will bring, 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 bring yesterday back. So yeah. you, you, like, you just come to your, your own realization that, hey, boy, no matter the question you're going to ask God, God is like, okay, you... you it's, you're there now. You, you, yeah. you're there. You're there. All right. So if you are alive, mm -hmm. definitely there's the reason why you're alive. So, um, like I say, the Bible says that uh, all things work together for good to them. Do you actually believe that? Because yeah. sometimes when things happen, it's so hard to believe those scriptures that you quote all the time before. Do you really believe okay. that? Okay. The, the thing is, the, the thing is, you know, I've I've come to a realization now that. God is the only person who knows the end even before the beginning. So there's a big picture mm. where you are just here as a player. Mm. The director knows what he wants to see at the end. So mm. he, he, he knows the end even before the beginning. So we are actors. It's like, you know, you, you take you, you go mm. like that. So we, we are actors. So if we we'll come to that realization, so that's the realization I'm in right now. Like, okay, yeah, yeah I think I'm just here. So... Since I'm here, 
what am I supposed to do next? Next. So I'm opening myself like, okay, what am I supposed to do next? And then he's giving me stuff that just what you have to do, start doing this, start doing this, uh, start doing this. And he's just connecting me. And so like, okay, so this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So uh, wow. So, what to say, uh, yeah. uh, uh, go over that. No, it's, it's a question I keep, I, um, you know, I, I keep saying it. So th today is, see, every day is special. You know, the funniest thing is, oh, I'm one person who is so, um, I'm so diary kind of person. Okay. So I always smack diary. So I look at diaries and I look at dates, 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 dates 23, 25. So every day there's something special about it. And okay. so when I see the, those dates Dates. and uh, I, I just remember some things we've done, you know, oh, wow. this is 25th. Something special happened today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So uh, it's, it's getting close to fifth. Fifth is her birthday. So like, this is even close to her birthdays and things we do. So there's just no way. Uh, I mean, oh, there's just no way I could actually deal with so that. But, but, but that doesn't mean that I'm not healed. That doesn't mean I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even saying that, you know. But I so one last question for the three of you. What do you think people need to see somebody, talk to somebody, maybe therapy, maybe grief counseling? Do you think it has any place to do with grieving or moving on from heart, uh, you know, a death, you know? Who wants to go first? Anyone? Um, I think I said it earlier on before that the biggest source of human misery is our inability to let go. And it's hard. Letting go is not easy. Yes. However, it is necessary yeah. if you want to move forward. And sometimes you cannot let go by yourself. Some people can. Yeah. Other people can't. Yes. And so I won't say you have to go for counseling, th um, grief fair. counseling or therapy. If you feel you have the ability to allow time to do its own natural healing. Um, but it is important if you are struggling, if you really, really are struggling to um, look at the situation and see it for what it is without it hijacking you. You can see a situation. I can recall my experiences i can still feel pain but it doesn't hijack me okay. and there's a difference yeah. um and it doesn't mean that oh well i've forgotten everything about it for a whole year after he passed away i didn't look at my wedding albums i had archived all our pictures i had any memory i had put it aside so it would it was almost as if it's actually one of the reasons why I started wearing my rings back because it was almost as if I was trying to erase that whole experience as if it never happened, happened. and then I realized that banker that is not actually how to deal with grief okay because all you're doing is just sweeping it under the carpet. suppressing it and what will happen is that there will be one oh. trigger one day that will Literally, just do this, and nice. the effect would be like an atomic bomb just blew. Yes. And so when I realized that, Banke, your what you think is processing grief isn't, is actually denying it, yeah. I started coming face to face with my everyday reality. I got my wedding pictures back out. I looked through the wedding album. I allowed myself to remember those things. And, and there were times where I did cry. There were times where I was so heartbroken. But that's something very important. You must allow yourself to go through that discomfort of the grief. You just, it, it's, no one likes to feel heartbroken. Mm -hmm. No one likes it. Yeah. But there is a place where you have to just allow yourself to feel it. Feel it. Because once you felt it, you felt it. Yeah. Right? Yes. If I slap you now, the pain, you'll feel it. After a while, the pain has gone. That's life. Right? Life comes in cycles, in patterns, in seasons. We live in a very rhythmical um, world. Which means that you will hurt today. Tomorrow you will smile. We're all smiling at some point. Mm -hmm. If you saw me two years ago, you think, no. would this girl ever make it? Saw her, if you saw him, you'd be like, can these people ever? ever? 
So what does it mean? It means time is your healer. But allow time to do its job. The reason why most of us are not healing is because we don't want time to do what it needs to do. Sometimes time is going to keep you seated in a place where all you can do is weep. All you can do is roll. All you can do is sleep. Now, the point of do you need counseling, do you need therapy, when that becomes a dysfunctional way of living, and what do I mean by that? When you cannot live your life every day in a normal way, it affects the way you think, it affects the way you sleep, eat, interact with people, there is a need for intervention. Because what it means is that you are not able to cope by yourself. Yeah. And so, yes, you get experts involved. Okay. Um, get a professional expert, yeah. I would add. I know that a lot of us run to the church or our religious um, <sighs> organizations as our source of help. Solution. And there is not, and I'm not displacing the importance of that. But the reality is most pastors, most deacons, most whoever, prayer warriors are not trained to really understand the psychological effects that we are going through. It's trauma. Yes, it is. Yeah? When you lose something, whether it's death, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a job, whether it's your friends, it's still trauma. And that means there's a psychological impact that has taken place within you that if you cannot handle it yourself, you need professional help. So yes, yes I would definitely recommend Thank you. professional Thank you so help. much. So, to I had to seek professional help I was lucky because a family friend at the time you know is a trained professional okay and initially she offered to help I would shut her down she would reach out she wanted to there I, I just sh I just didn't let anyone in okay for a long time until one day I went to her house mm. and just went on the floor I was just crying crying and you know therapy is therapy is important it's great if you feel like you can handle it without therapy then that's fine but grief is in stages yes so once in a while you might need external help yes it would help if you have someone you can trust yes or someone you can unburden to like yes. a friend it could be a friend it could be family it could be a therapist because sometimes I remember feeling frustrated when we started taking therapy. She's like, so how does that make you feel? I'm like, really? Like, did I come here for that? I feel bad. Why are you asking me how does it? Like, I was frustrated. I, I get that go, a lot. I wouldn't go for days until I have another episode and then I'll be back again. Or because she was a family friend, there'll be times when I need her to help me do something. And so she would just catch me like, and we, use we that. haven't spoken, we haven't spoken in a while. <laughs> I'll say there's nothing to talk about when I'm ready. So it does help to have someone that you can trust to speak with. I haven't done therapy in a while, but I feel like I need it now. Okay. Because I've been having some episodes. Okay. Um, it, for me, it started on my birthday. And it was like, everybody was celebrating and wishing me happy birthday, posting up my pictures. And I went, I went, I was getting my nails done. I was at the spa just trying to relax. And I slept up and I dreamed that my husband was still alive. So, and I've been having that dream. Like, so it was like, he's alive. Why is he hiding from me? Mm. So I feel like now I really probably... Maybe I'm still holding on to something. Yeah. I, I, because I, I'm trying to make sense of it. Because it, it feels so real. And I spoke last time I spoke to her, I was like, why would you think, do you think he'll be alive and be away from you and his child? Does that make sense? But I'm like, it's so real. Like, it's almost like he's here, but yes. for some reason, he's, I don't know. Is that normal? <laughs> Have you experienced it? <laughs> no, I need to Have know. you experienced it? sometimes the therapist sometimes haven't experienced loss. Yes. So they really don't know the stages or haven't experienced what you're experiencing. Are you asking? Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I feel like this will help. Yeah, because yeah, firstly, help. before you answer, yeah. the therapists are trained mm. to help you deal with whatever you are feeling. 
but but the but thing is that you have to you have to deal with I understand that. Like they help you deal with it so you still have to deal with of it course, of course you, of you, course you still have to do it yourself they'll ask you <laughs> <laughs> what is that Where, what do you think about it it's still what you think they will not even tell you what to think so you you was a very important part of your healing process. oh yes so you need to you you like the trouble yes yes, yes. <laughs> I, I don't think that uh, I've, I've seen any professional, but the thing is that I have professionals around me. So okay. once in a while, because the truth of the matter is that I'm also like a life coach too. Yeah. So it's like a life you coach. Like. Yeah. You, you are not, you know, but you are like. You know, I'm a life coach. All right. I'm a life coach. So it's like, I'm looking at, so sometimes, sometimes you know, just like, I just like, sit. Are, I, you, are you telling me what I know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, so it's like, I'm, I, it's like, I'll just, I take Teddy out. I put Teddy here. This is me talking to Teddy now. It's like, okay, so Teddy, what's wrong with you? So Teddy's talking to me. It's a, it's a crazy, seriously, it's a, it's a crazy thing. You know, I, I talk to myself. And then the other person who is talking, I'm telling you that, that, that this is where the Holy Spirit is. I'm telling you, this is like me having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. But the other person who is talking to me is actually the Holy Spirit. Because things that that person will tell me. I'm shocked that this person will be telling me that kind of thing, but that, that wasn't me. That's the Holy Spirit actually helping me out. So at this time, I think we should um, get closer to God. Yeah. It's very, very important. Get closer. Start having a real relationship with God. He is the ultimate counselor. Yeah. He is the, the ultimate, ultimate counselor. And then just make sure your, your, your intuitions are sharp. Uh, uh, but that doesn't mean that you cannot uh, go for professionals because there are certain things that they already know. So when you're saying this, they're like, okay, this is why this is happening and it can also help you. So God and, you know, seeking, uh, you know, a professional Wow, thank you so much. Help. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. I pray that, you know, it will get easier. I pray it will get easier. It will get better.